So um, I guide you in and some of you know that and I start a little bit more with the basics for you Isabella and, um, and then I share a little bit about what this exercise is and why we do that and where this is all going. So the invitation is that you just sit comfortable, have a, something to lean back um, so that, you, that your spine and your shoulders getting really relaxed. In the beginning is always good having a cushion or something on your on your lap, on your knees, so that your that your hands and your arms can rest. And it's like you're just getting ready for a for a good glass of juice on a beach chair and getting ready to chill out. So this is literally the best way of really finding it. And uh, so I lean forward that the camera uh, is. Um, makes it visible what I do is that, that you can see my hands but you just lean back and get really comfortable so that your shoulders um, kind of really are loose and and that's because that we want to make sure that you set up your body not for work or you need to don't need to work anything out so that your body knows it's just for you and you go into an action just for your own joy and then the invitation is to take, take something in your hand, an object, whatever that is. So it can be a stone or a, I have a piece of wood here or can even, you know, a bottle. So whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. It's just that you have something in your hands. And the first thing that when we have something in, in our hands, that we, you know, we put that kind of in a box, what it is and how to use it, what it's for. And the part of the mind just needs to be relaxed so it doesn't really kind of matter and then i invite you to go a level deeper into the haptic space so it's like there are a lot of sensory nerve ending in the hands and it's about to get different information because the hands have this capacity to feel the temperature is it smooth or is it rough and is it solid or soft, sharp or round? And then an important piece here is, it doesn't matter how fast you go, the invitation is to slow down your speed by half. So we tend to go normally really fast and then slow it down by half again, so get really slowly. Really like slow motion. And sometimes it's even necessary to just stop. And the invitation is as well to close your eyes or keep your eyes open and experiment with different settings, having eyes open or closed. <sighs> Let your breath flow. And just land into the sensation there in your hands whatever you do and then you notice on one point that there is a pleasant sensation like a tinglish yeah. nearly pleasurable experience on different spots and either touching your hand with the object or holding the object and feeling with the other hand over it. it doesn't really matter what matters is when you find a spot somewhere that might be on your palms or between your fingers or your fingertips or maybe the side of your hands somewhere where it feels pleasant or pleasurable to just to stay there and just allow yourself to feel this pleasant sensation Uh, it might can feel weird in the beginning, maybe even a little bit awkward or wrong or and let that feeling just be there so that all of your feelings are welcome and stay with the sensation of pleasure in your hands. So nowhere to go and nothing to give, nothing to get, just the pure experience there of that tinglish sensation. The 
just try different things, maybe between your fingers. And really get slowly, slow it really down. And your mind wanders and creates stories and moves, that's totally okay. That's what the mind does. So just allow yourself to feel with your hands. meditation is just really to slow down and allow that spot somewhere just to feel nice nothing more nothing less doesn't mean anything just to feel. And just a little bit maybe even. Just allow your breath to flow and when your attention moves somewhere else, bring your attention all the way back into your skin in your hand. Just this very simple it's like a little bit of an electromagnetic sensing.
important here is that you just recognize that you are in action towards the felt sense of pleasure. That's it. And you do that for one purpose, is to feel yourself. that you just recognize it has nothing to do with love or relationship or sexuality or anything else than just with your choice of putting yourself first in a pleasant way. The formula here is the slower you go, the more you will feel. Slowly and gently, I invite you to opening up your eyes if your eyes are closed. And um, during the rest of the call, I invite you to keep an object in your hand and just play with it. Just stay in connection with the sensed experience, with the feelings. Um, bring your attention back to the screen. And um, what did you notice about yourself when you're doing it? What was coming up? Feelings, thoughts, experiences, so that everything can be expressed and is welcome, whatever it is. Um, what I would like to share today is uh, just a few thoughts on... Um, I, was, I was pondering in the last week a lot about this thing with the hands and people were asking me and um, Monica you and I talked about that last um, week on the uh, hands meditation uh, um, when people ask so why are we doing that what's the purpose what's the intention where is it going and uh, I just like to just emphasize that that this little practice or exercise is the literally the cornerstone <laughs> the cornerstone of receiving yeah. And the cornerstone of receiving because when we were little, our very surviving and thriving was dependent on physical body contact to our caregiver. Yeah. So the sensory inflow of our skin through the bond through our, in the first place through our mother was literally the first part of our survival mechanism to touch and bond and create connection. So this is all existing in our nervous system. And then we have all this conditionings over years, you know, of our childhood and then teenage years and then we just growing up where we're just getting all these beliefs and ideas in our head why using our skin and feeling ourselves is not appropriate anymore. So when we actually start touching that again, what happens is because there are so many nerve endings in our skin, it's connected to a massive part in our brain. 
and it is connected to as well the feeling center in the brain and when we start feeling with our hands all the feelings that are, that are associated to this very experience in our hands will come up yeah. and whatever it is so this is literally the work that we're doing when stuff is coming up wonderful when memory is coming up wonderful and what that does it just like cleans the slate it just goes back to the to the rawness to the pure pureness of this very sensation that we have and when we have that back in place and that's not something foreign anymore or something strange or uh, weird or awkward or shameful so when we know we can go in action for ourselves and feel ourselves then the consent part comes in and the consent part is that we all need to have this capacity to use our skin as a resource to feel ourselves in proximity to other people so that this is the default of receiving when we are in connection with other people if we want that or not so as humans as emotional beings as pair bonders as mammals we are hardwired that way and there's there's an interesting saying that i would like to throw in today um, and that's the word addiction yeah so that addiction is a word that's got created in the mid 1900s so this word addiction didn't exist before and what an addiction literally is, it's a patholog uh, pa pathological <laughs> um, explanation of a substitution of connection. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just try to say that simpler. So when we think we have an addiction, the opposite of addiction or the healing of addiction is not um, solitary. Or that we're getting sober the opposite of addiction is connection yeah? and when i break that down into the dynamics of neurophysiology you know, you know an addiction is satisfaction based it's based on the release of dopamine and um and the hype of the nervous system to getting more kind of greediness yeah? well it's okay sometimes it's nothing bad to be greedy or wanting something really badly but the oxytocin pathway is the pathway of um, we're getting um, in connection with the sense of um, what's the word here happiness is the word and when we go in connection with that happiness contentment then we are okay with that what is and that is in relationship to connection. Yeah. Again, so the, the opposite of addiction is not solitary. The opposite of addiction is connection. And the hands, you know, they are literally this, this um, tentacles of the soul to just like make sense of the world and create this 3D reality of our environment. And, and, you know, that's when you see babies, when you see infants or little children, I just touch everything and just put everything and just put that in their mouth because we're just trying to make sure if, can we eat that? <laughs> yeah. And, um, that doesn't mean we have to take everything in our mouth, but that means that we have still the same capacity of our nervous system functionality that we can tap in to make our skin as a resourceful foundation of receiving. And that's what I would like to show you today, what receiving really means. Yeah. So, so and, um, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, receiving on one hand is, you know, sometimes we think that when we talk about receiving, that this is something that it is happening to us. You know, we think that receiving is, you know, we, we, we receive a compliment or receive a kiss or receive a, you know, we, we receive a present or we receive um, a letter or, or we receive um, an insult or receive a punch. 
<laughs> we receive a, a stone that somebody is throwing towards us. So what receiving literally means in this, in this broader context is something is coming towards us. And that's a big misconception that is absolutely confusing in most people's understanding emotionally and physically. And that's what I would like to just like this concept we can just totally throw away. Receiving means, do you want that? And receiving has nothing to do with the action. Receiving has to do with desire. Do you want that? And when you want something that might be in connection with somebody is doing something that you want them to do, so you receive by somebody else's action. This is what most people know as receiving. But that what we're doing with the object, and this is why I'm doing the object again and 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 again, is that we can receive while we are in action. So that is being in action and receiving. And that is this fundamental um, default of our nervous system to be in action and receive. And this is what makes that so valuable. So you can literally um, use that in any form. So you can, you know, go in action and receive a hug. Can I hug you? You, you, you can receive um, a massage. Um, can you massage me? But you can as well receive, can I lean my head on your shoulder? Can I lean against you? Yeah. So, so that this is something that receiving comes back into this realm of we are going in action and that's why I'm doing that. And when this is in place, it just opens up another doorway to another reality that will create literally a spiritual component to life. Because when we go in action and can receive yeah, individually, so I and you, then it is as well true that everyone else can go in action and receive. So that means that we have in ourselves this deep longing that somebody else desires us and want to reach out towards us and want to feel themselves on us. Each and one of us has this desire that we want somebody else going in action towards us and feel themselves on us. This is, as a concept, is super hard to understand. But as a felt sense, when you being touched by somebody who can feel themselves and this person has asked you May I feel myself on you? Can I feel you? And you can express your limits. You can say, yes, you can feel me, but only this part of my body. And you feel them not having an agenda. This is the most delicious, beautiful, amazing touch that you can experience. Most of us then confuse that experience with we receiving something. But no, 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 no. They are receiving because they have asked. It's for them. But you still have an amazing experience. But now here comes the bridge. Could you imagine that you then give something when somebody else is feeling you and you still have this amazing experience. This is where it's getting really good. <laughs> 
So you give and you feel amazing at the same time. Okay. There is this saying, um, you need a thousand words to paint a picture and you need a, pic a thousand pictures to um, make a video <laughs> and you need a thousand videos to um, replace an experience. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I would like to put that what I have said into a picture, into a frame and I would like to share my screen for a moment. Let's break that down into the dynamic of the giver and of the receiver. Yeah. So normally we think that the giver is only the person who is in action. And because um, we all have learned that the action is more important than actually who is it for, we think that going in action is the first thing that we just need to do that is important. And um, so what I would like to show you that it's not true that the action is more important. What is much more important than the action is the choice. So whatever the choice is about what is going to happen and um, who is doing the action is more important than actually the action. So um, what I want to show you is, and this is why I have created this dynamic of the engagement system. It's literally like this compass that you can use in any dynamics. And that means that there is a formula to that. So on the receiving side, the most important piece here is that you want something. So you have a desire. And that it comes with a certain formula. And that formula is that you need to have enough time and need to... Um, one second here. That you, that you notice, that you trust, that you value and communicate what your desire is and what you want. So that's the formula for learning to receive. You need enough time that you're feeling safe enough to notice, to trust, to value and to communicate. So when you actually capable of communicating that you know it's for you, then you do the second step. And the second step is you make a request and you ask, can I do such and such? Can I feel you? Can I, can I use my hand and, or can I lean against you or whatever you want to ask? Or can you do such and such? So that the receiver has to know that there are two ways of receiving either your action or their action. And then we need to ask the other person, and that's as well true if we are in the position of the giver. So that's what I would like you to switch now from the receiver to the giving side, because people might ask you. And here there's the same formula needed. So on the receiving, uh, on the giving side, it's not about what you want on the um, giving side. It's about what are you willing to and your limits. So what are you willing to give and what do you willing to give access to? And each one of us has limits. And I can talk on another point about the limits or later we can talk about them. And here's the same formula needed. So when people ask you about their action or your action, you need to have enough time to feel safe to notice, to trust, to value, and to communicate your limits. And that means you might or you might not be um, okay with doing something or allowing people to do something. And the communication is the next important step so that you can say in this place, yes, I can do that for 15 minutes. Yes, I can do that. Um, uh, just for you, or yes, I can do that, but not with my left hand, with my right hand. 
so whatever your limits is or you give permission and you say yes um, you can touch me yes you can feel me yes you can lean your head against my shoulder yes you can touch me everywhere where uh, I'm not um, uh, um, undressed you know everywhere where you have to put your limits and then and here comes the important piece then it comes to the action and that is either the action of the giver or it is the action of the receiver and that what makes it so strong so I want to say these two things that when you are on the receiving side you have to put yourself first and you have to respect the limits of the giver when you are on the giving side you have to put your you have to put your desires aside and you have to respect your own limits and that's really important in exactly that order let me repeat that when you're on the receiving side you have to put yourself first about what you want and your desire and you need to respect the givers limits when you are on the giving side you have to put aside what you want because it's not about you it's about the receiver but you have to respect your own limits and you have to do that in that order because if you only respect your limits and then put aside what you want then it's not about the receiver anymore then it's about you as the giver all right so I stop the screen here so I just want to say a few words about my journey, my story, my thing, and you just probably will see a little bit more about that. So my journey of awakening started about 25 years ago or so. And I had the first experience with, an, with this object thing without me knowing that I had that. And I was going on a long journey about a tantric awakening and I had a sexual awakening and then in 2010 I started to teach Tantra and then I went in connection with the wrong Tantra um, school and then I went out of that and went in connection with shamanic work what was really healing so I did that for a few years and then I came across this idea of consent and out of consent work I actually recognized that I needed to know much more about trauma the nervous system how everything is developed because there was all this misuse in this tantric field so I actually uh, then then the me too campaign kind of wiped you know all this disalignment out on the tantra scene and, and then I went down that road on uh, consent development and my tantric work went more on the side track and then I created end of uh, I think 18 or 19 um, a, a, a dynamic that called uh, unique Tantra so we have an individual approach to that work and that, that went as well kind of to the sleeping state of being and created then something on the side track that called somatic eros yeah. so now I have done for about four or five years I've developed and I put all my energy in developing somatic consent you know I've created that book I created the Academy I created the courses I created the year training I created all this education system and I just built this massive construct about um, somatic awakening and consent in correlation but now I had a, just a reawakening and that was just a few days ago and I'm really happy about that so that I revamp the dynamic of somatic errors and you find in the book one chapter about that pretty much at the end that calls this dynamic of being on the edge yeah and being on the edge of what and I had that last week I just made a little video on um, on Wednesday about the waking up the hands that we all have this massive joy through you know sexual energy and 
orgasm and climax and what I what I learned and what I, what this teaching of um, somatic arrows is that pleasure is infinite before the climax because every climax has a beginning and an end but the pleasure that we are capable of feeling before the climax is absolutely tremendous and no ending and the entire structure of somatic consent is literally a pathway into bliss and spiritual development yeah so that we all have this this um, tremendous capacity of transpersonal development through our own capacity to feel and experience sensual or somatic pleasure so why i'm saying that is that you will hear and feel and see more about this topic of somatic errors around somatic consent and that you're not getting confused so this is not a different thing it will be the same but i will i, I will start to get back focused on this deep embodied wisdom that i have since 25 years so i just put that a little bit on the sidetrack but why i'm saying that here for each and one of you why i'm doing that as well this is the foundation of my sensual and of my sexual and tantric awakening and again my capacity and each of your capacity is as well your capacity of pleasure is infinite when you don't have a goal in your sexual approach so use your sensuality use your sexuality and be more in your own capacity to feel pleasure in yourself and use that to fill up your cup high speed development and tremendous evolution in short period of time you find it in the book being on the edge the chapters around that just have a look i can't explain more in three minutes so there's a lot of stuff to find and uh, as well as in the academy this course of four pillars of relating uh, um, if any one of you is interested in that just let me know i can guide you into that but it's all in the book so you have it all in there so while i'm playing with that object i invite you to put that in your hands your object just for a minute or so remind yourself that while you are attentive and connective in the outside you can connect to the inside at the same time that might be just a micro movement that might be just bringing your attention while you're having it in your hands just for a second and stay in connection with the outer world so there's a an inside outside connection possible and that makes a big shift in your way of awareness and I would like to ask you while we are checking out having that object in your hand and do that simultaneously being in connection with your hands and the inside world while you're connecting with us and checking out talking to the outside world Donna, thank you very much have a beautiful evening uh, Wednesday seven o'clock 15 minutes waking up the hands um, just come we just do that um, <coughs> take advantage of the offerings that we do and just like uh, grab me <laughs> and experience yeah you're more than welcome to join anytime all right have a beautiful day and uh, thanks for joining and seeing you next time bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.